What's up YouTube? My name is Adam Wilson and this is Broadman Finance, a channel where we try to help you, the viewer, make good decisions with your money no matter how broke you may be. With that being said, if you end up liking the video or you take anything away from it, do us a favor, smash that like button and don't forget to subscribe. The EV boom is in full swing and in five to 10 years, there is a really good chance that, the, that a significant amount of the cars you see on the roadway are going to be some type of electric vehicle. Because of that potential, EV companies and electric vehicle associated companies seem to be popping up every single week with the latest and greatest and what makes this company better than that company and this past week has been no different. Lordstown Motors has been in the headlines this week because they have decided to take the company public. But what makes them different than any other of these EV startups? In early 2019, the current CEO and founder of Lordstown Motors, Steve Burns, stepped down as the CEO of Workhorse. But there were no hard feelings because the two companies are partnering and working very closely together but we'll talk about that more in just a minute. Lordstown gets their name from the town in which they are headquartered in Ohio at a ginormous complex nicknamed the Voltage Valley. This complex is equipped with over 6 million square feet of space with the capacity to produce over 600,000 vehicles a year if the demand for that many vehicles from Lordstown was ever in that much demand. The truck getting advertised and marketed right now is the Endurance. It's an all-electric truck made for rigorous work. It's also their only product. Mm, a little bit of a concern there. But what makes them any different than any other EV company? The truck has four in-wheel hub motors and this is what separates them from other EV companies. The Endurance is the first commercial vehicle to offer this. Lordstown Motors say that the four motors in the wheels gives much better handling and control when driving, as well as fewer moving parts. Because it has fewer parts than any other on the market, it reduces the overall cost to the consumer from a production standpoint, as well as the overall cost for yearly maintenance. Another reason this truck is so light is because they wanted a certain amount of mileage to be able to, to be got out of this truck from a full charge. The heavier it is, the more energy it takes to perform. Because there is a motor in each wheel, you truly have a four wheel drive. The base price right now for the Endurance is around 52,000, but there are some federal tax grants and some rebates, I believe, that would bring that price point down to the mid 40s, which is much better when you take a look at the other models in this space. And right here you can see all the key competitors for Lordstown. Rivian, who just signed that big deal with Amazon. Of course, Tesla is going to be in the space. Nikola, Ford, and GM are, are, are getting ready to launch stuff in this same electric vehicle space. But you can see here that Lordstown is the only one, per them, that has a commercial fleet focus and a full-size pickup. Rivian doesn't offer both. Tesla doesn't offer both. Nikola, I don't, I don't know what Nikola offers with the Badger. I, I don't know. Ford, GM is actually one of the partners for Lordstown. A lot of GM's pieces will be going into the Lordstown trucks. GM is actually a big investor into Lordstown. That actually makes me feel a little bit, a little bit better about Lordstown than other speculative stocks. But the main point I want to drive home is this bottom line. That's what consumers, customers, me, you, and everyone else likes to see. You can see that all these trucks are, they're all in the high 60s, low, low 70s. The Ford, there's no telling what the, but whenever Ford's F-150 electric model comes out, what that'll be. But right now, Lordstown is showing a $45,000 expected price. And you can see with that $45,000 price point, that is a much more attractive price. If I own a company and I need 50 trucks, or I'm starting to, to cycle trucks out and I want to go more electric, that's going to be a much more attractive price point than, uh, let's say, Rivian's nearly $70,000 truck. The range for the Endurance is approximately 250 miles, which is competitive with the Tesla Cybertruck model. To get a 95% charge, it could take anywhere from 10 hours to 30 minutes, depending on what kind of charging station 
you hook up to. Now, if you're interested in electric charging stations, I've got a video, link above, I just did one on Blink. If you're interested in that, please feel free to go check them out. The top speed for the Endurance is 80 miles per hour, and that is governed by software in the truck. It also has a total capacity of 7,500 pounds, which is actually pretty impressive considering. Integrated software monitors and adjusts every wheel every millisecond to optimize performance, range, and efficiency while simultaneously monitoring battery pack performance. Their advanced telematic system provides owners a wide range of data for fleet management. And you can see right here with this management team, led by CEO Steve Burns, that everybody, they, they, these guys are from Tesla, Toyota, Nissan, Amoco, Karma, GM, Honeywell, Tesla, Workhorse, Napa, Chiquita, from bananas to Tesla. So I do like the maturity and experience of this management team that makes them very, very capable and makes me a little more comfortable with the handling of the business and day-to-day -day operations. So that is a that is a, a, a check in that uh in that pro Lordstown box. Look at these key strategic relationships. One of those that's been gaining a lot of attention as of recently is the one with Workhorse. That is Steve Burns' old workplace. Workhorse has licensed Lordstown to use some of their intellectual property, basically their ideas, for royalties for each vehicle sold. Plus, Workhorse has a 10% stake in this company. Both are going to be mutually benefited from the success of each company. I mentioned GM a little bit earlier. GM is making a $75 million investment into Lordstown, which includes a spot on the board of directors. I'm okay with that. Lordstown will also use GM components in their trucks. Again, another mutually beneficial relationship. Here's a few customers that are already making pre-orders on the Endurance, including Duke Power. That's right down the road from where I'm at now. That's where Lordstown is in the space. Now, who is Diamond Peak and how are they associated? Diamond Peak Holdings Corporation is a SPAC or a special purpose acquisition company. Basically, it's a company formed with the sole purpose of acquiring another company. Lordstown has entered into a definitive merger agreement with Diamond Peak Holdings Corporation, ticker symbol DPHC. The combined company will remain listed on the NASDAQ under the new ticker symbol RIDE, R-I-D-E. The Lordstown Endurance will be the first full-size electric pickup truck designed to serve the U.S. commercial fleet market with initial production expected in the second half of 2021, an entire year from now. Approximately $675 million of gross proceeds that are expected from the transaction will be used to fund production of the Endurance and its innovative in-wheel electric hub motor design. The transaction includes a $500 million fully committed pipe, meaning private investment in public equity, which includes that $75 million I mentioned about GM earlier and also includes several different private investment firms. The implied value of the combined company will be around $1.6 billion. The transaction is expected to close in the fourth quarter of 2020. But I do have some concerns about Lordstown. Now, although Lordstown has a lot of really good things going for them with GM on their side, they have a, it sounds like they have a pretty legitimate leadership team. Workhorse has a substantial stake in the company at 10%, but I do have some concerns. Right here, you will see what makes this company very speculative. It's that big fat goose egg right here. That big zero. Nothing actually sold. Nothing is actually being made in revenue. Everything sounds great and people can say whatever they want to and have all the hope and optimism in the world, but I want to see the product. I want to see it being sold and being used before I invest my money. So I'm not gonna know that until these trucks are sold and used. But just like some of these other speculative EV stocks, all we have right now is a prototype. And as with any speculative stock, there's always gonna be a high amount of risk Although that does come along with a high amount of reward, if you're willing to take that risk and it ends up working out in your favor, 
you know, you're going to see a, an elevated reward from that. But there's also the other side of that, which is an elevated risk of loss if this thing goes south. I'm just a guy on YouTube. I am no kind of financial advisor. I'm just reporting back to you things that I've researched and things that I think are interesting and giving my opinion. You have to make the, the final call on what to do with your money. Another concern of mine is just the amount of competition that's coming to this market and the amount of saturation over the next few years that there could be. I know they have the in-hub motors and the wheels. Is that going to be enough to really separate them? I like the price point. I do think that is a, a definitely a, a notch in their favor. But with the amount of saturation that's coming, is the demand for this truck going to be there? Also. If I'm being honest, I think the truck's ugly. I think the design looks terrible. I feel like it was rushed just to get something out there into the market to try to say they were one of the first ones, but I think it's, I think it's an ugly truck. I would not want to buy this truck. I would be curious how many other people feel like me. If you like the truck, leave me a comment. If you don't like the truck, leave me a comment. I would love to hear your opinions, good, bad, and different. However, however, the, the look of the truck can be updated, modified, improved for the better. And I think the biggest positive in this thing is the in-hub wheel motors. But the concern on that end is there is software integrated into each wheel that's given constant responses back uh, to the driver. But even with that, I hope my local mechanic will know how to work on this thing because there is some different technology and software located in these wheels. What am I gonna do as far as investing in Lordstown? I, I'm probably not going to right now. I'm probably gonna hold back a little while and try to see if it once production ramps up, how these guys how these guys will actually function. They definitely got some pros. They definitely got some cons. I think right now a better play for me that I would recommend would be probably Workhorse. So if I were you and I had some money to invest, I would definitely look that route. I think they have more pros and cons right now. And if if Workhorse can land that USPS contract, I think it's going to be a no-brainer. That's a six billion dollar contract. Do I think they'll land it? Not exactly. I think that they're going to get a part of it. I think the USPS contract is almost too big for them right now. So I do believe that Ford will get some, and I think that Workhorse will get some. Point being, going back to Lordstown, whatever piece Workhorse gets out of that contract, I think it'll be very beneficial to Lordstown as well. But that's all for me. Please, as a reminder, like the video, subscribe, and as always, stay safe and take care.